and the other thing with goal setting, I can't think of because I talk too much. <laughs> I thought you were gonna reveal something mm -mm. amazing. Nope, uh, I would never do that. By the way, you do no, not talk too much, you talk no. just enough. Turn it up. Get ready. You're tuned in to Feel Buzz Weekly. Weekly. And now, prepare to get seriously buzzed with your hosts, Chuck Duran and Stacy J. Aswan. Hey everybody, Chuck and Stacy here with VO Buzz Weekly. You guys, we're going back for more buzz with the awesome Anna Vicino. Come with us. So I want to go, I want to track back and yep. I want to talk about um, your uh, your voiceover career, uh, specifically in, in, in the promo space because um, as we all know, the promo space is you know, was at one point dominated by dudes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And almost like the car industry was, and now there's so many more women doing car ads, it's not even funny. Mm -hmm. Like, it boggles my mind. It's great, I love it. Right. Um, but the promo space is now open to the ladies, man. And, and in and, fact, they're inviting it. Yeah, a lot of and you are living are like, proof of yes. that. So what do you think in your opinion, well, two things here. In your opinion, what do you think shifted that made that now like a good thing, a thing that people want? And two, oh, what did you do to take advantage of that trend? <laughs> I, I really wish, I I'll give no. you some thoughts. <laughs> I really wish that I just had speculate. like the, the you can pithy answer yes. of, because we all know that it's that that magic confluence of opportunity and, mm -hmm. and whatever the other thing that coincides with it. I can't Luck. Hear. Thank you. <laughs> and, and so I, what happened was my lifetime of training and acting and comedy and just all around snarkiness just came together at the right time mm -hmm. where uh, ABC was able to get a female voice on the air, which the producer had been trying to do for five years. Mm. And so right at that time when all the Shonda shows, the Shonda Rhimes shows were on on Thursday night was the time that they were able to convince the brass that... Yes. Shouldn't it be a lady? Yeah, mm -hmm. promoting these shows. <laughs> like, yeah, yeah. And and they were like, well, on the air or just the scratch track? <laughs> yeah, scratch know. track is fine. <laughs> <laughs> is this a comedy set we're doing? <laughs> yeah, right I know, now? Exactly. Like I, I just that's how I imagine every yes. every television executive is just like, yeah. oh, and they have a monocle. I don't know. <laughs> they and look like the Monopoly guy. All of them. <laughs> all of them. All of them. <laughs> all of them. <laughs> they have like Monopoly guy and Mr. Peanut like yeah. crashed totally. into one person. If they had a baby and yeah. Mr. Potato Head and yeah. him too. And uh, and so I I think I was in the right place at the right time. I will say, it was one of those. Every now and then you have one of those when you read on it. And you're like, I do really have the right approach for this particular mm -hmm. thing. Yeah. Like, and I knew that. And I have studied and worked and done. Ever I, I have studied so much in all aspects of voiceover, but promo. So that's an infuriating thing mm -hmm. for folks to hear because I did not train in promo. Mm. It kind of just came naturally in that sense. You didn't sense. overthink it though and go, I'm going to be promo -y. Well, I did promos years before mm. on like one-off things. Like, mm -hmm. And I remember I did one for like Judge Jackie Glass or some judge show on CBS during the day. And it was, I think, Elaine Craig or, or her husband. And, and, and I remember auditioning for it. And it was one of those ones where they tell you, and I think it was Elaine who was like, they read everybody, just do what you're going to do. And for some reason, when she said that to me, it gave me permission that I've never given myself before. Mm -hmm. And I was like, oh, you mean I can just do what I want to do and not what I think that they want? And that opened that up. And I was like, you know what? Screw it. I'll just do what I want to do. And mm -hmm. I did it. And then I got it. And then that's how I got promo experience because I did a bunch of those. Right. And then would do like little one-offs. And then I did I did a, 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 a series of, of, or supposed to do a series. Actually, no, that was later. This was just a one-off for uh, Fox Sports. I'm doing the session and the guys are like, just, just do it. Just do it. Make your voice deeper. Like make your voice deeper. And I was like, okay, make my voice deeper. Like I was like, oh, Fox Sports. Like I was like, sounded so Fox strange. Sport. Is that good? You like that? Is that good? And then sure enough, like five minutes later, my agent calls like, yeah, you're fired from that one. And I was like, I was like, yeah, I know. I think like, I knew yeah, that. Okay. Oh, you said good. <laughs> And it was so like, ugh, I don't it was want just so like, job anyway. exactly <laughs> stupid. And I was so embarrassed. And then I realized I actually had a friend teach me later on. He's like, no, what they want. And then he taught me what he calls his dead eyes read. And they just didn't know how to say like, 
they didn't know how to say that to me. And I was interpreting like, okay, I'm going to voice deeper. When what they were wanting was like that kind of really sultry read. You I know see. what I mean? And I, they didn't know how to say it. Or maybe they didn't want to say it because it's two men on the phone with a woman. I don't know. Like, mm-hmm. I don't know what it was, but it was a mess. <laughs> and I was horrified. And I got fired. And by yeah. the way, you get fired sometimes. Sure. Totally. That happens. Mm-hmm. And from the moment you get the campaign, we mentioned at the beginning, from the moment you get the campaign... Tick, 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 60 minutes clock until it runs out. So just enjoy. Yes. It. Yeah. So yes. I, uh, then by the time ABC came along and then NBC, it was like it kept priming the pump for mm-hmm. being ready to do that, that job. Yeah. So now you are literally one of the main signature voices of NBC. NBC. You're on there it's all Dorian the time. And myself that right comes now. Yeah. with. Yes, a lot of cash, I'm sure, but it also comes with what you referred to uh, earlier as the golden oh, handcuffs. Oh, you're doing the golden handcuffs, Golden move? handcuffs. So, yes. For, yes. so for those people out there that, that you're not are thinking- That you are complaining about. Yeah, no, but, no, 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 I love that. That are thinking about, hey, maybe promos is something I yeah. want to do. Uh, what is it like being a successful promo voice actor from your point of view? <laughs> you know, it's funny. A friend of mine just got a live announced job in New York on a regular morning show there. And, uh, and he needed to be like, he was racing home to get to do a session in the afternoon. And he was like, Oh my God, it's so grueling. And I was like, <laughs> I was like, I think I'm the only person you could complain about that. Yeah. Yeah. And, yeah, and exactly. you know what I mean? Like this does, cause it doesn't yeah. sound, it's not polite to, but, but he's, but I get it. And, and it is grueling and he's got to get up at like four in the morning every day. So, you know, and, the, and by the way, if you're doing the news stuff, the affiliate stuff, yes. oh you're gosh. up early or yeah. you're up late at night. You're and not in your time zone half the time. So. You're not in your time zone yeah. and you got to do it. And, and, uh, I, I feel in, in the affiliate world, in the promo world, in the live announce world, people are so nice and delightful to work with. I mean, voiceover is great in general, but mm. that segment of the world, I think because everybody moves so fast. Yeah. We have to get all this stuff out. It's like you yeah. have to stay pleasant because if, yeah. if you're a jerk, you're out. Like you're just not even going to be in it. Yeah. So um, wait, what was your question? Well, my question was, <laughs> my question was, you know, the golden handcuffs. Oh, the golden like handcuffs. how yes. do you, yeah, because um, I'm okay with it. I I work my schedule around it. I bring my mic with me everywhere. The last time I didn't bring my mic with me was in 2011 when I went to Italy. And sure enough, I had to race and find, I was in Southern Italy where my family's from and nobody speaks English. It's very remote. And I had to find like the town DJ and borrow his SM57 and record something with a blanket over my head in a, like a castle. Like it was wow. very echoey, like no matter what very I did. dramatic. And I was like, yeah. it's, I can't, I have to bring the mic with me. So yeah. the mic is on my person. Mm-hmm. Uh, I can't tell you the number of times that my, my husband's been like, I get the, oh, turn around. Turn the car around, mm-hmm. go go back to. Yeah. And he's very, he's <laughs> yeah, he's very accommodating yeah. and very understanding. Yeah. And, How much are yeah. you? Because I know every network is different. Are you directed every session, or do you at this point just sort of do your thing and you they know, tweak you? Or? Every promo writer is different. Every some some people want to sit in on the session. Some people have a specific way that they want it read. Some people are like, no, just tell her to do her thing that she does, and it's fine. Right. Mm-hmm. So it it oftentimes depends on the promo writer slash producer. Uh, I will. It do a pass, and if we don't nail it in that one pass, we'll go back and pick up a line, or we'll just do the tops and tags. Like it's a very fast yeah. thing, yeah. and kind of once I got what they wanted to go for, mm-hmm. then you got. Yeah. You know, I know that the voice one is a little bit like this, and I know yeah. that the comedy ones like this, and I know that so and so writes the Will and Grace ones, and he likes them like this, and mm-hmm. you start to learn. And, and now it's been about a year, and uh, so. Y- you know, yeah, it's, I didn't even think learn. of that. So yeah. every genre that you're doing mm-hmm. yeah. uh, has maybe a different director for that that yeah. wants a certain thing for that show. Well, when a, and a new show comes out, like there's a show called The Wall, and it kind of the yeah. is like yes. more sensey yeah. approach, and mm-hmm. it's like it's a, a, a more hushed sort right. of whisper. And then thing. Ellen's Game of Games. And then that's has super its fun. Whole, and Ellen's yeah. Game of Games. Yeah. And, you know, a lot of squirting. And, yeah. mm-hmm. A lot of squirting. Messy. Like no, it's so funny. <laughs> it's a very messy show. <laughs> and that's the other thing. I don't see any of the promos because I'm doing oh, them yes. on the thing. I don't yeah. have a picture in my studio, yeah. so I don't see them unless I happen yeah. to go in yeah. and. And, no, I know because we always out. have a joke at the end. You know, they do like the I can't remember what it's called, but when they have to the do splat. The, no, well, no, the, when you, you guess the celebrity, celebrity names. names. Oh yeah. yeah, and I always get them. And Chuck's like, you should you, go on there. I'm we like, gotta have you on the show. It's a like, hundred grand for like ten seconds. I'm like, but to get to that chair, she's like, is I'm not like, being thrown no, into a bunch of red juice. I'm not gonna have juice. like Jello squirted in my face. It's not worth it. You would be an absolute delight on that show. America would fall in love. with Totally, I think so. In my big like, yeah, exactly. Weeble suit. 
yeah, like exactly. trying to eat oh, great. You fall flat yeah. on your face. Uh, so let's talk about your your whole improv stand up background. You and your husband yeah. do stand up together. We do. Um, I mean, you do it by yourself. I do it by myself. Yes, we have a dual act. Who's about funny? <laughs> <laughs> Just kidding. You don't have to he answer is. that. Um, hmm. he, he's okay. I've been married for twenty one years, and uh, we both started off as actors, and then we did the sketch comedy show for Spike TV mm. in two thousand five, and we it was the weirdest show and then like we they put us on right after wrestling like it made oh, right no after sense. wrestling it was the craziest lead in <laughs> oh and God. and i love the show and he found out really quickly he likes to write better better than act because he yeah. wrote the, and he wrote a bunch of series that was one of them i was on and he wrote for jimmy kimmel and it, and, and so i when i started doing stand-up i was like i've made him punch up all my jokes why wouldn't you? Right. Yes. You live with a comedy writer. Exactly. And uh, and then but inevitably we'd fight about it. And then I'd be like, no, I like the way I wrote it. And then he'd be like, why are you telling jokes about me? And I was like, yeah, okay, well, you deserve it. <laughs> and because I put up with you for 20 years. Because you so, have so much material. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> and uh, so then he was like, well, screw you. I'm going to go tell jokes about you. And so he started doing stand up. And I was like, damn, son. And then I, we both kind of had this epiphany at the same time. And I think it was right when uh, Neil, God, what's his name? Neil Brennan's Three Mics came out. Did mm -hmm. you ever see that? Mm -hmm. I didn't it's, see that. it's a very interesting thing where he broke the convention of just doing straight stand up. He did one liners, then stand up, and then he would go to the center for some storytelling. Uh -huh. And it would black out in between. It was wildly engaging. And, uh, and I was like, what if we could do. Uh, be up there at the same time because my pet peeve is watching male comics. By the way, another male dominated industry is yes. comedy. Yeah. Yes, yes. And uh, and so coming up in improv and in stand up, I'm very used to kind of operating with the boys and got mm -hmm. I, I got it how to like, you know, shut up, whatever, you know, and like I, I, I thought, what if we could get up there? And he also thought that, but was like, mm. <laughs> do we want to do, do we? That? It's weird. Yeah. And then it all kind of happened at the same time that our daughter went off to college two years ago. And we sat down and we just started writing material. Mm. And we started with our wedding and went on through to like fighting, money, sex, all the topics. Yeah. And, yeah. you know, wrote a, so much stuff and then figured out what was funny. And basically now we have a half hour act that we do, which obviously we do smaller chunks for smaller shows. But it... <laughs> It's been really fun. It sounds like it's a blast. And what an really interesting fun. way to, I mean, I'm sure it opened up, I mean, because it is challenging to uh, to have two creative people, you know, when you work together, you're married. You're, you know, it could be volatile. Yeah. For sure. So it must have been interesting Emotionally creating volatile. the material. I don't want anybody to think right. feel yeah, dangerous no. or anything. No. I have a feeling no yeah, one would. Uh, there might be a little danger involved <laughs> after think, the fact. I think you can hold your yeah, own. Exactly. This makes a good, let's see. This, <laughs> um, but, but. Probably opened some interesting dialogue between you guys. It about did. In fact, we do have a joke about me throwing stuff at him when I'm mad at him. Mm. And um, at one time, I legit like threw an omelet at him, and like I was, I loved him enough to make him <laughs> eggs. And then three minutes later, he pissed me off so badly, I threw it at him. At least you didn't throw no, the pan. No, you did not. Yeah, not, not the, the pan, just the omelet. Just like, ah, like oh. flung it at him. And then he jokes that, you know, that was the closest he's ever, he's ever gotten to breakfast in bed. So, <laughs> you know. But no, it's it, it, it's oh, really great. great. It's very cathartic for us. We had a lot of shame about how we got together because we'd only been dating a short time um, in the 90s. And mm. then I got knocked up. And then we decided to get married and we... Didn't know each other that well. Yeah. Yeah. You jump right into it. We're both Italians. We're both passionate people. Yeah. And um, so it was actually very healing. We had a lot of shame surrounding how we got together. So then we were able to write jokes about it. And it actually was like made our marriage better. Yeah. That's so so great. it's kind of like an old world arranged marriage. <laughs> someone brings a goat. Dude, someone yes. brings some someone brings pasta. it already a bun in the oven. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> There you go. Well, yeah. 21 years is not for nothing, so yeah. good for you guys. Yeah, that's a big yeah, accomplishment. Yeah, it's, it's in Hollywood years, I guess I would my be gosh, a Oh, like my gosh. That's like your platinum. Like 100 it's years. the platinum years. <laughs> so many years. <laughs> yeah. He's like, can I be done now? <laughs> um, so where can we see this uh, this duet comedy? Well, we're going mm. to be in um, Pittsburgh in June. We're going to be back in New York, I know, in November. So, And we produce also a monthly show here in town, and we're... I'm trying to think of the dates. 
<laughs> That's okay. We're we're constantly performing in LA. Go yeah. to my yeah. site. So it's going to be there. And it's under upcoming shows. Oh, beautiful. It's under there. That's the Perfect. best yeah. way. Yeah. Well, you and your husband and your microphone yeah. will be going all over the place. This is true. It, this that's, is true. That's part of it. By the way, I went to Italy with the microphone a couple years ago. Mm. <laughs> they and said, what's that? It, they, they were like, I, they all, they're like, uh, is in Bari, which again is in the south. So they saw the microphone, like, hey, what, a, you know, what is that? And I'm not doing an Italian stereotype that is literally, hey, oh, hey, yeah. what is this? So what is the microphone? And I said, <laughs> I, do, I, do, I do voiceover. Oh, a voiceover. Hey, and you bring, come over here. She's not the voiceover. And it was like a whole thing. <laughs> and then I got, they gave me my bag back and I had a giant bottle of water that they completely missed because it was so exciting to I'm see a mic the microphone for <laughs> voiceover. <laughs> Safety first, Italians. Oh my goodness well, gracious, go. that is hysterical. I, I can that. make fun of Italians because I'm Italian. Of course, you, hey, listen, I make fun of Italians when I'm not even Italian. <laughs> so it there you go. It is really fun. It's, I think it's Pete Holmes who says like Italians, like we can still make fun of those guys. Like, yeah. Absolutely. And, my and, Italians and, are good sports. Yeah, yeah. in our house, yeah. Stacy makes a great, Pasta. And yes. there's any every time she makes it, we're Italian for at least oh five God. minutes. Oh yeah, you have you to know. be. Oh my God, hey, that is oh, 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 Yeah, it's so fun. Yeah. It's so fun. Yeah, it it's is fun funny. food. It's fun. Mm -hmm. Fun people. Um, so Anna, <laughs> yes, ma'am. What do you think are your strengths as a voice actor, or as an actor, as an artist? My strengths as a voice actor, um, timing. Uh, I, I think I have an instinct for what works commercially because I was reared on the TV. Mm. I I remember there's this phase of time in the 90s where people would brag like, I don't even watch TV. And I was yeah. like, yeah, don't brag about that. Like, why not? It's awesome. I love TV. <laughs> yeah. TV's great. Like, yeah. And uh, like, I still have jingles and commercials memorized from the mm -hmm. 70s and 80s. Yeah. Mm -hmm permanently embedded in my head. So I think that I have a musical background, singing background, piano background, don't do any of that now. And I think it all serves. I think I think that people who have a musical background yeah. do well, or they have the ear to be able to pick up on things. Uh, I have, I'm able to be a mimic um, in the sense that I do a lot of voice matching. And in fact, for a lot of the, the lean years, that was very good way to earn money because you'd get a contract on a movie yeah. mm -hmm. for matching five lines to Kate Winslet and then you'd get the residuals from it, which was pretty great. Yeah. yeah. Pretty great. Yeah. But um but that being said, I also know when <laughs> I'm just not gonna like for example, I did a spot for for NBC and then they were like, you know what? This would actually sound really good with Dorian doing like a Barry White. And I was like, you know what? You're one hundred percent right. Yeah. yeah. And then they were like, oh, should we not? I was like, no, no, I don't, I don't have ego involved. And like, if it's not a right thing or not a right fit, I, you'd be surprised how little I have the reaction. And I think it's from just being disappointed so much. You finally are like, <laughs> I, you know what I mean? It's like, yeah, I don't like, care. You can't disappoint me yeah. anymore. Like maybe if somebody, if somebody told me in the middle of a session, you're not right for this, we're going to get a different voice to read it. I might go home and cry right. when 20 years ago. And now I'm like, <laughs> you're absolutely right. Yeah. Yeah. I agree. Yeah. And, and don't like, there's no need to take that stuff personally because that's the other thing. It is rarely personal. Yeah. Like unless yeah. you were in, going in there and being a jerk to people, which yeah. you're not. People in voiceover are nice. Yeah. So but don't take it personally. Sometimes it's just not right. Yeah. Maybe yeah. that could be a good piece of advice to some of the newer people out there yeah. is that just don't take things personally. You can't. If you're not right mm -hmm. for it, you're not well, right. That's the other thing that voiceover is so hard because we're just shooting out auditions in, into the dark and, and yeah. I, I have never done my like audition or booking ratio or anything like that but I guarantee you if you took a look at it you would be like girl you know <laughs> but because it's just we, yeah. we do so much like yeah. our, it's our job yeah. to audition and to have it take as many at bats as possible yeah I mean within reason I mean sometimes you know like all right this is not going to be one that I'm going to do although for every time I've thought that there's been another one that's been a left fielder yep. that's been the one that you get so Stop trying to overthink it. Stop trying to control right. it. And and just know that like when you're sending stuff out into the dark, I will say this. Give yourself a rule of thumb. If you go a year and you don't book anything, 
just go get some coaching and brush up and see what's going on. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, Start watching TV a little bit. So, yeah, <laughs> like do yeah. do the things that got yeah. you to where you, you know what I mean? And and if, yeah, I, I think that there has to be a little bit of that. Like you got to be working out. You got to be, also too, when I started, my daughter was little. I was reading to her all the time. It sounds stupid, but I really think that like just reading aloud. Oh, yes. Reading yes. out loud just kept the the mechanism sharper yeah mm -hmm. you know that's wonderful yeah yeah how are you at self-directing and are you a harsh critic of your own stuff or do not you just anymore do it and walk out i do it and walk out yeah i kind of know what i want to do yeah. with the thing i see the anthem spot i know the anthem voice i'm going to use i see the drug spot i know the drug voice i'm going to use i know that you know the approach and it's not yeah mm -hmm. i'm not trying to reinvent things and that being said I, here's the thing. Agents don't have time to redirect everybody. Right. So if you're really right for it and you totally miss the mark, you'll, you'll hear from them. Right. Anything else is a gray area and they probably, you probably won't hear from them. Yeah. Right. So if, if you're totally right for it and you're a little bit off, they'll probably be like, this is good. Yeah, we'll submit it. But if you're really right for it mm -hmm. and totally off, then you'll hear from, but really you don't. And when I moved over, I went from Daniel Hoff to over to Vox and I was there for eight years and I loved it. They were great. And I remember walking in the booth the first time and Jason just goes <laughs> like that. He just points. And I was like, oh, I started because that's when I start. Okay. Like I didn't know because I was used to Shane like saying, hey, let's talk about this. And like yeah. he really yeah, was like yeah. working. You know what I mean? And I yeah. was like, oh, go. Okay. And, and, and I realized I wouldn't have been ready had I not had that experience. Yeah. Right. And sometimes we want to get impatient and move things like, ah. Oh, I, well, I booked a job, but I want to book more jobs. I want to do this, right. you know, and it takes as long as it takes yeah. to kind of get to that. Yeah. And then at this, and then I, when I moved over with Dean, I wouldn't have been ready for Dean if I hadn't had this time at Vox. Mm -hmm. So it all yeah. made sense. Those yeah. 10,000 hours are adding up, right? To at least 10,000 auditions. Yeah. Oh, right. I know. Yeah. I know. Yeah. 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 Well, that's fantastic. And yeah. I love that. I love that every single step, every process that, that happened along the way, led you to where you are mm -hmm. right now yeah. and maybe l looking at everything in retrospect, like there's probably nothing that you would have changed, you know, if it got you to the point where you're at right it's now. Okay. Yeah, it's okay. Yeah, it's okay. And I will say this, I do, I'm a big fan of goal setting, of writing down intentions mm -hmm. and don't just do it once a year at New Year's Eve or whatever. Yes. I, I think you, it's, it's a process for me that I like to check in with all the time. And and if you have something, I mean, I'm now at the age where like I've had several things on my list <laughs> and then you for go, okay, for a while yeah. and you're like, all right, yeah. <laughs> it's time to call it with that. And that's okay. Yes. And let's focus our energy here because this seems to be working. Get on the horse the way it's going, you know? Yeah. Mm -hmm. And and I have always done two things with goals. And the first one is financially, I always set a goal. And it's always a little bit more than what I made last year. And in 20 years, it only dipped down one year and um i don't know if it's goal setting that's doing it or if i'm just having a really good run either way in my mind it keeps me You're for whatever reason yeah it keeps yeah. me on task yeah and you know when the first year i did voiceover i think i made 750 dollars, and then i said you know what i want to make low four figures and that felt okay and resonant in my heart and, and then the next year, I was like, you know what? I want to do mid four figures. Like I was, I was like, I, I'm a, I'm a Taurus. I move things yes. slow and Baby steady steps, wins yeah. the race. And, the, and listen, I was a political consultant as my day job for years. And it, I was, I would go shoot a series and then come back and like file people's FEC reports. It was horrible and I hated it, but I was very like, afraid. I had a kid. Yeah. I had a mortgage. I was like, I, I want to take this really slowly. And it wasn't until 2008 that I was finally like what you would call a full-time voiceover right. actor, yeah. Yeah. you know? Yeah, yeah. And also I think belief work is very powerful and beliefs have been a huge <laughs> hurdle for me because I mean, I grew up on the East coast. I didn't know anybody in Hollywood. I just knew that I wanted to be a part of it. But, and I just knew I loved being a dancer and I loved singing and I loved acting and mm -hmm. none of that made sense to go and actually do it professionally. And Lord knows the family was like, what are you doing? <laughs> you have a two year old, this is nuts. And um, I think that belief work is what's kept 
me opening up my own mind to be able to believe it's possible, to be able to believe that like I can do what I'm doing. I did write down, I'm going to be the voice of a network. And I forgot I wrote that down. And when I booked ABC, I go, oh, nope, that's not it. Mm. I said, that's okay. We'll leave it there. And not that I was like, I have to be the voice of the network. I was just like, yeah. I just knew it wasn't that, that that wasn't, I, so yeah. I left it on there. Yeah. And some would argue like, but you were promoing a night of shows. And I'm like, no, I want to be, I want to do that thing. Yeah. And it, then you just let it go. Like, cause do you obviously write this in, somewhere where you can see it daily or not daily? No. I, Cause if I see it daily, it'll stress me out. Like I'm not doing enough right. mm -hmm. and you don't want to, like, you want to walk that line. Some people can look at, some people put their things right up on the, the mirror or the yeah. desk or yeah. whatever. And yeah. Good. That's great. You're a strong person. I'm not that strong. I'll look at it and go, Oh God, I don't do a thing. And yeah. Because a lot of this stuff is completely out of, as we spoke oh. earlier, it's completely out of our control. Yes. So what am I, if I'm going to look at like, I'm going to be the voice of a network. What am I going to do? Audition yeah. and not get it. Like, start your own network. Start my own network. <laughs> I'm Oprah. Hey, there's an idea. You get a car. No, I, it's like it doesn't work. You can't. Yeah. You'll torture yourself. And uh, but it was like an interesting moment of recognition to go like, no, I want to do what they say the ladies can't do mm. and be the voice of the network. Yeah. Um, it could be. It could be argued that I'm still. You know. But it, the, no, no, you've definitely no, done that. I, I, I've, I've done it. Write yeah. something else on the list. You're ready for it. You're doing, Maybe you're another doing network. It. That's fine. But I, you've accomplished. You're doing it. And I you're think going to keep that writing it. stuff like that down is really good. But every single day I go through a process in the morning. I, I don't necessarily journal, but I journal about what I think of something that made me uncomfortable the day before. Mm. And whether that's a, something that made me angry, something that made me feel doubt myself, something that made me frustrated or fearful or mm. sad. Now I'm burping. <laughs> no, I'm not. Okay. Yeah, I'm done that. Um, so I, I think about something that made me uncomfortable the day prior and I write that down. Like what was the, the thing? Well, Dean called and said that, you know, you're fired from that thing or, what, or whatever yeah. it is, whatever yeah. it is. Or Dean said you didn't get the thing and it was, you know, what made you feel uncomfortable? Why did that make you feel uncomfortable? And you really have to like ask yourself, like what, what I have to believe is true that that, thing yesterday made me uncomfortable. Mm -hmm. um, if I'm being honest, for that thing to have made me uncomfortable, I'd have to believe that I am no good or worthless. And then you go, don't oh, go down that route. Yeah, hole. no, I don't actually yeah. believe that. And then it kind of takes the sting out of that thing. Because you know when a bad news thing happens, yeah. Yeah. we want to replay it over and over in our head. Yeah. Because, and personalize it. And personalize it. Mm -hmm. And so that takes the sting out of it and go, and makes me then not dwell on it or feel like, you know, you yeah, that generalized orneriness that we can yeah. mm -hmm. sometimes feel. And maybe it's also too, right. that happens more when you get older. Cause you're like, right. I've been around so long. Why is thing <laughs> She's getting cranky. Where's my oil can? No, yeah. but I think too, when we, I think it's really important to find the balance of your level of joy is not at all directly linked to your bookings. No. And your auditions. It's like, it when can't because be. when people say, how are it you? It's like, be. I'm not going to take, I'm not going to answer what, because what, what you're you asking me is, what have you been up to? You? And I'll be like, what are you Chuck's working on? Great. The cats are great. Like I, anything I'm like, but. I am not yeah. going to do the verbal oh, I, resume. I like, I like playing that game. Yeah. Ooh, good. Of, so doing anything. That's but. cool. Yes. Yeah. I talk about, oh, I made this great thing. And then yeah. I said thing. And, yeah. But what about, oh, I agree. Yeah. I agree. We have yeah. many more interesting things mm -hmm. to talk about. However, yes. the you know, I, I do always want to help my fellow people how I can because other people yes. have helped me. Yeah. Hey, you know what was a huge influence on me was when I first got to town, I went to the SAG Conservatory and took a Bob Bergen thing mm. at the SAG Conservatory. And he told me, uh, well, all of us, I'm, I'm making it about me. <laughs> um, he told us that he had spent all this money on all these classes and demos to basically be an unemployed, out of work voice actor. And then it took a while and then things, and it helped so much just to hear that, like, yes. you know what I mean? Just yeah. to hear that and go, okay, because at the time, I, we had $3,000 saved and that was all allocated towards doing this voiceover thing that I really wanted to do. And my husband was gracious enough to say, sure, you can spend every last penny yeah. we have on Take this the dream egg, that you have, yeah. you know? And so that was a big jump. And so just to hear 
Yes. Him say that was yes. just like balm for the soul. Yeah. You know? Yes. I mean, yeah. you're going to always make money. You're going to always lose money. But yeah. what happens in between, your right. sanity, your peace of mind, your self-worth, all of that should not be negotiable. Right. You know, it's Absolutely. Hard. It's but hard. you don't, said. sometimes you don't learn that until after you turn exactly. a certain age. So. Yeah. 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 You guys got a lot to learn yeah. out there. Hey, let's put Anna on the, Getting uh, older's fun. On the hot spot, the Can hot seat. Can you reach me? Yeah. Here, I reach for you. What is, oh, is this a cube of questions? This is mysterious. Oh, it's mysterious. Mysterious question. A mistress question? No. A mystery question. Um, pick any question. And Chuck's going to say, read it in your promo Favorite voice. promo voice. No. <laughs> uh, and if you don't like the question, we can get a different one. I just immediately went blue with my response, and I can't do that. This is a family-friendly show. Yes. What <laughs> parts of you fight with each other? Well. <laughs> <laughs> and you know I'm going to say them titties. <laughs> <laughs> I can't not say it. Bleep it. Bleep it. <laughs> oh. Do you want to do That's so good. I love that. No, you no gotta you're going to leave in them titties. Yeah, just leave it. You can get, we can, we, <laughs> that's not a bad word. Oh, when you were a kid, did you ever think your parents had left you behind? Yes. 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 Every day? Ow. No, I was a latchkey kid and there was like, oh, she worked all the time. Like, yes. yes. No, it's like, we're, dude, we're getting deep into part of the damage right now. Oh. <laughs> Listen, comics sure, are comics what? because Why they're well adjusted. You know, okay? yeah, you know what? Lie back <laughs> and just tell us how so I felt when I was six. Why do you think no. we have a bigger couch? <laughs> it's getting real in here. No, I definitely had that. Not, not, not because I actually thought that she abandoned me, but right. because I was like. Maybe they forget that you're there. Oh, she did actually. She forgot to get <laughs> at the airport one time when I was little. Because this is back when you could, I had to fly to go visit my dad, right? Yeah. Yes. And this is back when you were an unaccompanied minor and then you just got off the plane. Mm -hmm. And nobody and walked you. No, nobody walked you anywhere. So I was just, I probably was like eight or nine. Oh my goodness. That's so not little. super little, but young that's enough. And, but now we would, can you imagine no the way. amount of times we were left unsupervised yes. oh my in the world? Yes. Yeah. I would take the subway. I would like, and so I just marched out and I, and I waited for her. And then I was like, hmm. And, then, <laughs> and I picked up the pay phone because we yeah. had pay phones then. Yeah. Wow. And I called her and I was like, hey, I'm at, at National Airport. She's like, oh, I'm sorry. She felt so bad. I'll be there in 45 minutes. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I'll be there in probably, well, two hours. It'll take two hours to get there from Loudoun County. So get us there. Yeah. Something unprocessed. There so you there go. you go. Wow. And look, uh, and, and look, and even with that, you still turn out. Look at that. Fine. I'm just fine, you guys. As that long as so you, you, have you ever left your daughter anywhere? Uh -oh. No, I don't think so. No, it's not going to happen. I don't. Not that I recall. If not, we blocked it. We can, <laughs> we've repressed it. Because she's say, great. But they say that parents do that. So... They say that parents do but that. But now so she's my, in college, so she's, she's fine. fine. She's totally. Fine. Listen, Listen, she's fine. Yeah. Thank you for <laughs> thank coming you. down. And uh, we know that this has been like just, you're a busy person. Yes. And in fact, you had she's, to like call us and say, hey, I, gotta I, do something. I just got a job. Yeah. I got to jump with the phone. And then we'll yeah. come back as soon as I can. So it. thank you for making Love time it. for us and sharing with us. Thank you and, for having uh, me. Absolutely. Um, you guys are delightful. Thank you. QVOC. Eat happy. Yes. Yeah. Eat happy too. Yes. Fitness confidential. Yeah. We love you. Thank it's you. all I love about you guys. Anna Vecino. Thank, so Thank you so much. Well, that concludes our two part episode with the awesome Anna Vecino over there. Yeah. Yes. We're going to be back next week with a new episode for you guys. So check it out. We love her. We love you. Thank you so much for watching. Follow all of us on social and just remember you, you always have time for a little buzz. I nailed it. Yeah. 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 Nailed it! I'm Anna Pacino, and I just got buzzed with Chuck and Stacy. Remember to eat happy. That's me. Come on, come on, come on and get buzzed with us. The O Buzz Weekly is sponsored by Chuck Duran's Demo That Rock. Rock. The voiceover demo producer to the stars is now available to you. Visit DemosVetRock.com and take your voiceover career to the next level. See you next time. And remember, you always have time for a little buzz.